have at least one of the three criteria usual for a lot of patients to feel confused when it comes to a PCOS polycystic ovarian syndrome diagnosis and the reason is that although there is some consensus the Rotterdam updated criteria is one of the places where you want to have a look at it was updated in 2018 really the essence of it is that in order to be diagnosed with PCOS you need to have at least one of the three criteria irregular or absent periods follicles in the ovaries and or um, clinical biochemical symptoms which is essentially measured by hormones of imbalances and we're going to talk about these things in this video specifically around what are the exact tests that you need to get it's going to be fast paced so you might want to go back and review and slow it down but essentially I'm going to share with you all of the tests that you need to get done and then some of the things that you might need to look at if results come back and you don't have the exact types of, of you know biochemical balance that we should be seeing okay now there is a lot of confusion because PCOS is one of those syndromes that it doesn't go away if you have been diagnosed with PCOS even if you you know the follicles in your ovaries reduce and you don't have the same kind of pearl necklace shape around the ovaries but you still have some of the other criteria then you still have PCOS and one of the things that happens often is because sometimes diagnosticians don't really take the time to have a look and really could monitor different symptoms over time and monitor the changes that are occurring within those symptoms because sometimes you might have hair um, you know hirsutism male pattern hair growth and you may have that treated and that disappears and by the way there is no way of reversing male pattern hair growth you'd need to have laser or some other kind of hair removal in order to be able to actually manage it but once you treat it for example with laser it won't come back but you may still have other symptoms even when those symptoms are under control say blood sugar is normal your hormonal balance is normal and you don't have many follicles and your weight is normalized if it had been out of out of balance you can still have that latent condition and that's why we say that PCOS is managed it's not cured there's no real cure for it but you certainly can manage it extremely well um, and so those are some of the things that you want to keep in mind PCOS is one of the number one in fact it is the number one cause of infertility in women of the reproductive age it affects up to 15 percent of the female population and what it is that you want to know is essentially when you're trying to get pregnant the biggest and most important thing is that we regulate cycles of course insulin resistance has been linked to miscarriage and increased miscarriage risk and of course women with PCOS have a higher risk of developing diabetes as well and insulin resistance can sometimes be a, an initial uh, factor that needs to be taken into account as well as irregular blood sugars so which again are precursors to diabetes and we want to make sure that those factors are really taken into account because if we don't manage those even if you conceive you're more likely to have fertilization implantation and uh, failure and of course increased risk of miscarriage so let's get started with what tests and you want to make sure that your tests are take your bloods are drawn on day two to three of the cycle that's where kind of most of your hormones are at baseline and it's going to be a much better way of being able to compare what happens from cycle to cycle if you're doing it that way the tests that you want to make sure that you have done are things like FSH follicle stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone AMH thyroid stimulating hormone your DHEA sex hormone binding globulin um, things you want to make sure that you measure and test free versus total to, uh, testosterone reason being that in PCOS androgens which are the male type hormones are usually elevated usually are increased prolactin also needs to be tested your 
kind of myriad of uh, blood sugar regulation like for example your fasting glucose fasting insulin your hemoglobin a1c fasting lipids and triglycerides also are important because usually cholesterol is elevated in women with pcos and that is not necessarily too abnormal um, in general but in women with pcos it's something that we want to manage there's no need to go for drug therapy for elevated HDL versus LDL, typically, if you can manage your PCOS with diet, exercise, and the things that essentially make it be, you know, kind of under control. And of course, fasting homocysteine is also useful. So all of these tests, you wanna be making sure that you're testing them day two to three of the cycle. So if you start a period today, you wait a day, day two, and then day three is essentially when you wanna get it tested. And you certainly wanna make sure that you are within reference range for the results. And although the reference range is really, uh, in a particularly for thyroid stimulating hormone, you really wanna be around the one mark. You know, the reference range can be up to five. IUL um, international units per liter, which we know that anything above 2.3 increases the risk of miscarriage. So even though you will be within the reference range for TSH, if you are 4.5, your risk of miscarriage is infinitely increased if that's the case. So even though there are reference ranges, then we want to make sure that for the most, for the majority of things, you are within those reference ranges and being there is going to be ideal. For things like TSH and some of the other hormones, that is not necessarily ideal. Okay, so just be aware of that and know that you might need to get extra support if things are not exactly how they need to be. Generally in PCOS, your LH to FSH ratio will be a two to one, so it will be out of kind of range or out of order, even if it's within the reference range and your LH is higher than your FSH by two, um, it can be an issue and, it, and it's certainly one of the biochemical irregularities that we talk about in the criteria, okay? So you wanna make sure that your testosterone is also within range, typically it's elevated, in PCOS, typically um, sex hormone binding, glo binding globulin is lowered and irregular blood sugars, insulin, you know, your uh, hemoglobin A1C, your fasting glucose, fasting insulin may also be out of range. So you want to make sure that those things are definitely being taken care of. Increased homocysteine generally happens in PCOS and cholesterol and triglyceride also is typically elevated. But again, I wouldn't be so concerned and so worried about those, although you want to know and you want to manage it and you want to make sure that you get it within range as best as possible. But the, the biggest issue that we're going to see is irregularity of cycle, okay? And that's something that can be treated, something that needs to be addressed if we are to actually get the outcome that we're looking for. I've done other videos on PCOS. You will be able to find it within the video section of the Gabriella Rosa Fertility um, Facebook page and you'll be able to learn a whole lot more. But this is essentially the summary of what it is that you need to know and what it is that you need to do when you're having testing done to get a proper diagnosis of PCOS so that you can also understand what is it that needs to be treated and how to best get your results. I hope that helps and until next time, bye for now.